What's up everybody, this is Jesse with 44 Astro with an astrology video over Saturn in the first house. Um, this video is gonna be about possible manifestations of what Saturn can mean in, a, in an individual natal chart in the first house. Um, but please understand that if Saturn is in the first house, it's not touching your ascendant and has no aspects on it, then it's very unlikely to play a major role in your life, even though Saturn is a very powerful planet, maybe even the most powerful planet. Um, it's arguable that he is. And I say him just because of all the literature that I've read, it always paints Saturn as a, a male uh, deity, even though if you really study down into it, it's most likely a female uh, female, a female energy, but really represents duality, so probably both. <laughs> but just know that if there's no aspects on Saturn, then there's no energy there. Now, if he's touching your ascendant and there's still no aspects on him, it doesn't matter. He's touching your ascendant. If he's touching any of the major big three, the sun, the moon, or the ascendant, he's going to play a very major role in your life <clears throat> just because those are very important um, planets or energies in the natal chart. And also, I want to state clearly that astrology is not one size fits all. I'm of the Jungian school of both alchemy and astrology, of which, which are the primordial ancestors and predecessors to the study of psychology. That's why Carl Jung studied them thoroughly, because <clears throat> the planets themselves are ancient archetypes. They're cosmic projections of the collective unconscious of humanity. They're as old as humanity itself. And the proof of that is in like the paintings that you see, the cave paintings you see on walls of stars on the walls and all the ancient megalithic structures that we don't even know how were built like Gobekli Tepe and the pyramids and Stonehenge, which are all astrologically aligned and we know that they are. I look at astrological influences as unconscious expressions looking to be discovered and worked out in us, right? That's why they were studied. It's, it was the earliest versions of psychology. They're not, it's not just un or mundane indicators of like future or past events or scapegoats to blame when something goes wrong or right in your life. They represent patterns that have existed throughout all of human existence, accumulated through all the epochs of humanity, right? And even though the information is derived from observations of the collective over a long period of time, it's always personified microcosmically in individuals. And you'll see the influence and the archetypal expressions in people. And that's what archetypes are, like the hero, the mother, you know, the gods. These are all archetypes. Something that's that we all kind of know what they are and are in one way or another are played out energetically in our in our uh, physical lives, right? Even though you can't really pin down necessarily like I mean you can individualize a mother, you can individualize a hero, right? But there's always gonna be more of them and they represent a specific thing. It's a it's a larger collective archetype. And that's what the planets are. They're archetypes. And they are our macrocosmic mirror as we are microcosms of a universe. It all grows by scale fractally from smaller to bigger, but it all, it all mirrors each other. It's all the same uh, design. And that's our closest macrocosmic um, mirror is the planets. And that's why they play such an important role on individuals. And that's how they express individually through us, through the individual psyche. And they're, they were used in ancient times as the, the form of psychology to help understand people kind of in a more complete a more complete way and kind of understand the personality of individuals and how they manifest. And clearly there was something there because it is still studied today. I give a quote from Carl Jung. I can only gaze with wonder and awe at the depths and heights of our psychic nature. Its non-spatial universe conceals an untold abundance of images which have accumulated over millions of years, archetypes, of development and became fixed in the organism, us. And the images are not pale shadows, but tremendously powerful psychic factors. Beside this picture, I would like to place the spectacle of the starry heavens at night, for the only equivalent of the universe within is the universe without. And that's what Carl Jung said, and he was a studier of astrology. And that's why I follow astrology and psychology. And I think they are one in the same. One is just the original predecessor. And honestly, I think psych, uh, astrology is much older and therefore goes in much more depth. But there's always still evolution and growing to be done in it. And that's what I'm trying to do here. Okay. With that being said, let's get to Saturn in the first house. 
Now, what is the first house? Okay, the first house is the physical self. It's your personality, how you interact with the world. Okay, on a deeper level, it's the experiences an individual is likely to have which help develop the conscious tools that we use that govern our individual like daily life. The tools that we use, everything, how we react to everything. How we do anything that we do, right? It is, it's the body too, it can represent the body. But not, and it does in a physical sense, but not just a physical sense. Um, but it's also the presentation of like an individual in a conscious and deliberate manner, the persona. Um, Basically, whatever you innately are has to be expressed through a body, right? We have to because that's kind of what we are um, and according to a body type. Um, so the sign here, like whatever your sign is, like Scorpio, Sagittarius, Aries, whatever, the sign in the first house is going to play a role on what the individual will look like. There are genetic factors too and there, and there are also astrological factors, but you'll see, like, especially with the ascendant, because, I mean, that's where the first house starts. You'll see, like, a specific narrative. You see, like, certain looks and types of people when you see the first house and um, specifically the ascendant. Um, and, and there's a two-way flow, two flow of energy in the first house, right? It's the lens which you experience your environment, right? But it's also the individual qualities that pass to the environment, to the individual, right? It's like... The lens in which you experience the environment, like the way the environment can reach you, but at the same time, the way you project onto the environment. So it's like two-way energy. It's, it's the self, really, right? It's how you interact with the world. Um, it's the point where self-expression begins and meets experience, if that makes sense. So the first house begins at the point of the ascendant. The ascendant um, is determined by the hour of birth. That's why if you're looking up your natal chart, you need to know exactly down to the minute if you can, the second, really. But within a few minutes, it's going to be fine. And because the ascendant changes every two hours, and it's going to set all of your houses, right? Now, the first house and the ascendant are associated with the Jungian concept of the persona. The mask in which any of us present ourselves to the world in any given situation, right? The persona is what stands between your actual ego, how you relate to the world, right? And then the outer world. Like, your, this, the ego has to exist, the, the concept of I, because you can't relate to anything around you without an identity. And then whatever this veil that you project through to the outside world, that's where the persona is. That's the first house. It, it, the first house acts as a conditioning agent for the qualities of an individual personality, right? Um, developing it so it can be recognized and expressed to others in like a tangible fashion, right? The mask you put on so that you can get the specific um, uh, image you want or the specific uh, reputation that you want, the specific uh, version of yourself. Um, you know, this is where all the masks that we wear in any given situation and for, for whatever experience in our life, this is where they're created is in that first house. Um, and, if, and if it's going to be a healthy medium for expression, and Saturn there isn't the greatest planet, but I'll get into that a little deeper soon. Um, we have to be, we also have to understand that it's not just the, the two-way inner and outer expression, right? How we, how we relate, uh, relate to the environment and how we project onto the environment, but we also have to understand the more hidden and unconscious aspects of the psyche that also interact with it in the background, right? Both individual and collective. Um, you know, and that's, that's the entire reason that the practice of astrology exists and uh, why it's still used and practiced widely today, right? Because there's so much information that matches up. I mean, if you look at, if you look at astrology and you look at psychology and you really start looking at all ancient astrological descriptions and explanations of things, it matches very closely with the study of what psychology does, which is trying to understand the individual. Okay, and the first house is the most unformed part of your natal chart, right? This is where it all starts. This is the process of becoming, you know, the balance point between the outer environment and the personal unconscious motivations an individual will have. And it's determined by the strengths and weaknesses of that persona or presentation. And the planets will tell you a lot there. And it's important to, if, if you want a healthy expression, 
especially with Saturn there, it can be tough. You know, whether it's going to be crystallized and rigid, which what Saturn would represent, because that's what Saturn does. He, he, he rules the crystal kingdom, and he's a very rigid and delayed planet. Um, if, if it's crystallized and rigid, it's not going to be the healthiest expression. But if you understand it, it's flexible and worn lightly, and you understand that these masks that you present forward to the world are actually masks, and you don't attach to it as your identity, then you'll be just fine. But Saturn's makes that tough in the first house, and I'll explain that a little bit more in a minute. Um, and if you've watched any of my Saturn videos, you'll understand that Saturn is also Janus, the two-faced god, because he represents duality. Um, this is why there's always a dual expression that can be possible. That's why I said it can be crystallized or it can be flexible. But it depends on the individual, and other aspects in the natal chart will help to like help you recognize that. Um, if it's in fire signs, it's probably going to be very difficult because Saturn does not like fire signs. Like if your first house is a fire sign, it's probably going to be a little bit more difficult and it'll be harder to, even in earth signs. He likes being in earth signs, but it'd be very easy to become rigid in an earth sign. Maybe not so much Virgo, but Capricorn and Taurus for sure. It'd be easy to, for it because it'll, 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 it'll operate easily and then they'll, like, they'll crystallize to that because um, Taurus doesn't like movement. And Capricorn doesn't mind movement, but Capricorn wants things to go in a specific way and wants it to be controlled. And therefore, the aspect of change can thwart that control. So therefore, Saturn might make it hard to have, wear those masks flexibly. As to where fire signs will want it to be flexible, but Saturn won't like it. So it'll be kind of, um, it'll be a lot of conflict and tension to get through it. With air, it, it's, it's probably going to be fairly easy because air signs are logical and they'll be able to like probably break it down. And then with the water signs, it should be easy except for probably Scorpio um, because water signs have an emotional intelligence. And therefore, um, in certain situations where you would, you would have masks on and where you're trying to present one thing and then hide another thing, and that's what the persona is when you are presenting something forth. In, innately, you are hiding something in the background that you don't want the individual to see. Um, with water signs, there's, there's a, an intuitiveness and an aspect, and with Scorpio specifically, an aspect of like having to be genuine. So it's, it's less likely that the water signs will, will develop so much of a mask. They'll, they'll know it well because they're... Water signs are good at hiding emotions, and they'll they'll hide a lot back a lot of the time, and like kind of shell up, especially with Cancer and Scorpio. Just to kind of, and with Pisces, it'll be so that they don't uh, upset their partner or upset the situation, because Pisces is going to be big about trying to keep peace, even if sacrificing themselves. That they'll know that it's a mask, so it'd be very hard to uh, because they know that they're presenting it forward for those reasons to protect themselves or to so that it won't really crystallize either. But anyway. The objective is always with Saturn in the first house, especially if it's touching your ascendant, is to understand when you're wearing masks. Because we all do in different situations. But understanding that they are masks and that we are trying to present something forward manipulatively, but that's what communication really kind of is, right? We're always, it's, it happens unconsciously anyway. So we're trying, manipulating a situation. Anytime we're speaking or doing something, we're always trying to like accomplish something or gain something. So... Or at least not to lose most of the time. I mean, sometimes I guess you could communicate in order to try to lose, I guess. But even that would be some kind of manipulation. But that's what we do as people. It's all natural. So it's not like it's an evil thing and it shouldn't be looked at as such. It's just good to understand when you're wearing the mask and when you're not. Because if, if it comes crystallized and, and you're stuck and you believe that this mask that you created is you and then something comes along to shake that up or to break that in some way, it shatters it. Like you become, your identity becomes your work and then all of a sudden you get fired, it will crack your world in half. And it can be very devastating to an individual. That's why it's important because Saturn will create tension of opposites, right? And his tensions of opposites, is, is, is the reason he, it's tension of opposites with the duality is because it's trying to keep you centered, right? And so if you over-identify with any role, like, like I said with the job or presentation, you can crystallize into it. And then it becomes who you are. And then it's so fragile and dangerous because if anything comes along to, to, to crack that, um, you're going to realize that you have now um, hidden all of your treacherous aspects and your shadow aspects in the unconscious because you've been hiding them because you created this image that you want people to think you are, not acknowledging other things in you that you were trying to hide, and then they become shadow aspects. And then it can just burst out, and then it can cause like a crack in someone's psyche. It can cause breaks, like psych psychological breaks. And it's very dangerous. Um, but also at the same time, 
if you understand the mass aspect and you're very uncomfortable with it, Saturn can make it to where you completely withdraw from the outer world because you don't like the aspects, man. And you're afraid to, like, because Saturn can cause fear. You're afraid to, like, crystallize with it or you don't like that aspect of, like, because Saturn can be very perceptive and, like, might not like the whole aspect of people being phony all the time because that's what we are. We're always just smiling when we don't really want to or we're shaking hands. But how are you? Oh, everything's great, but you're thinking in the background, oh, but this shit and this shit and this shit is going on. You see what I'm saying? And so it's like, and, and that can cause an individual with Saturn in the first house to, like, withdraw from, from um, like, on the opposite side, completely withdraw from the world and then, therefore, kind of um, be dominated by the mercy, be dominated basically by your environment, and you're kind of at the mercy of your environment. And that's really, that's really, that's really dangerous too. And it, that's the extremes, right? The tensions are trying to keep you in the middle to understand when you're wearing the mask, so you can know when you're taking on. It's that that's know thyself, right? So when you are wearing a mask, you can know it. You can be like, oh well, I wore that mask up, and to to accomplish this in this situation, even though I did hide this aspect, but being aware of that and knowing that keeps it to where it's it's conscious. You're conscious of it, so it doesn't have to be put into the unconscious and build up pressure. And not only that, it's been acknowledged, so it doesn't have to force itself out, right? It's been integrated. It's been acknowledged and integrated. You're aware of it. You've thought about it. You felt it. You understood it. So it doesn't need to, to manifest, manifest itself forward. And at the same time, if it makes an individual uncomfortable, you're also ignoring it because you're trying to stay away from it completely. And that's just the way the world works, interaction with people, right? You have to have these masks that we wear. And then you're just going to be dominated by your environment and you're not going to have a very productive life. Um, that's why this ascendant is super important. That's why it's one of the most important, uh, the three, it's one of the big three. Um, it needs to be in a delicate balance with the direction of the natal chart. That's why you need to know what all your planets are, all your aspects are, you know, all your houses, all these things. It's going to give you an idea of the direction of the chart. You're going to probably have a bunch of planets in a specific area or a bunch of aspects in a specific area or a specific sign that's dominant or a, a planet that's in a specific sign and therefore is a, in, in its rulership or is in a mutual reception, which means it's in an aspect with another planet while it's in that planet's sign of rulership and then the other planet is in its sign of rulership. So you see them as like a crisscross. They're, they're touching each other, but they're in each other's um, uh, sign of rulership. So they, they'll, they'll still be prominent. Or if you're, a planet is exalted, or it's in detriment, or it's in fall, these are all important things to know. And that'll give you an idea of the direction of the chart. Um, you know, this, that's why I say the whole aspect of know thyself. That's why I make these videos. I want individuals to learn so that they can know themselves. No one's going to know you better than you. That's why it's important. That, and use as many resources as you can. I, I hope that you use mine, but you can use anybody's. Read, learn. There's always good information out there. And the more you know, the more you can see correlations, and the more it can help you learn about yourself. And that's why I encourage everyone. That's why I make these videos is so that you can learn to read your own chart and really know how these things are playing around in your life because you, only you are living your life and you will know where they play a role. Okay. So Saturn is the great malefic or is considered the great malefic, though I promise you it is actually Pluto. And Saturn's, Saturn's general influence isn't necessarily a positive one. At least it's not looked at in that way, but it's mostly looked at in a mundane uh, manner as to where I look at it in a more sacred manner and give it more depth, which is Saturn's just the great teacher. He's the designer of the material world and therefore will teach you your role in it. And generally that takes time because he rules time and delays. So it take it, the, the fast, well, I mean, the faster you learn it, the better use you'll have of your time. Um, you know, he represents boundaries, delays, crystallization, fear, rigidity, death, duality, the harvest, I said time, gateways is, if you're talking about Janus, um, karma, he's the material, uh, the, the designer of the material world. It's believed that he's the ruler of astrology, but the ruler of astrology is Uranus, uh, which is Saturn's father, but that's who rules astrology is Uranus and the sign of, um, Aquarius. <laughs> um, and, but he does rule all things magic and occult. So I would say that astrology in and of itself isn't occult because it isn't hidden. Not really. Um, it's out there for everyone to learn. And it's, all of us will be probably exposed to it at some point in our lives in some manner or another. Um, so, like I said, 
Saturn rules is also Janus, so there's a dual meaning. There's always a dual meaning with Saturn. So there's always a chance for growth um, and transformation because of that. Um, the influence is generally experienced as like hardship and conflict when it comes to Saturn. Um, but that's because he's a great teacher and people don't like to learn. Like if things are easy, we will just get further, further into whatever we're doing and get lazier and lazier, get more and more corrupted because that's just the nature of the animal. If we're presented with conflicts, we'll be forced to overcome them and then they're forced, therefore forced to grow. So Saturn doesn't have to manifest in that way, but almost, well, almost always because we won't learn otherwise. If life is just too easy, we're not going to learn what we need to learn. So he's basically the greatest teacher for us to become the most complete versions of ourselves, specifically in its relation to the linear, mundane, material world. Um, he is the, the archetype of the wise old man, but he's also the archetype of the devil. And it's up to every single one of us to choose what archetype or role it will play in our lives in each of our individual experiences, right? And it's like, like I said, it's not for it to be a scapegoat. So if you're going to be like, if you're going to use this escaping, but oh, it's all Saturn's fault. It's all Saturn's fault. It's all on us individually. And that's what Saturn's trying to teach us. That's what the wise old man is trying to teach us. And I've always looked at Saturn as the wise old man or the wise mother. <laughs> now, with all this being said, let's talk about what Saturn can mean in the first house. So if Saturn is actually touching the ascendant, right? depending on what other planets are aspecting it. If Saturn is actually touching the Ascendant, you're going to have a very serious-minded individual. It, it won't really occur. You're not going to see it much in children. You'll see man manipulation probably in children. It'll be someone that's hardworking and wants to help, um, but for the sake of like getting on the good side and having the good reputation, because Saturn is all about status. Right? So if Saturn is actually touching the Ascendant, this is going to be a very serious-minded individual. It's going to be very calculated. It's going to be very concerned with their reputation, how they are seen, how, and what other, basically what other people think about them, even though that really shouldn't matter. But that's also, like I said, because it's in the first house, that's crystallizing the mask in a lot of ways. Now, you can do that without crystallizing the mask, but that's just understanding and, and really powerful uh, I mean, you can be very, you could be like a CEO. This is somebody that could be a CEO. This could be a perfectionist for sure. This could be someone that's also sickly because Saturn can, can bring disability to an individual if it's actually on your ascendant. But it depends on what sign it would be in. If it's in a strong sign like Scorpio, that's unlikely. If it's in a sign like Pisces, it's very likely you may be sick. If it's touching Chiron, you would definitely be a sickly individual, almost for sure. Um, but it just depends on the sign. It also depends on what planets are aspecting Saturn and from what houses, right? And that's why it's good to know the whole chart. But in general, this would be a very serious, hardworking individual, very, very much into perfection as far as like everything they do would be very calculated. It can be a very manipulative individual. It's very subtle, so you wouldn't even notice. They'll be very, very good at it. Um, very hardworking, someone that's going to work very, 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 very hard, specifically because they're trying to attain status. Now, depending on the sign, like I said, if it's a sign that Saturn doesn't like or is aspected by bad planets, it can manifest in the other way. It can manifest as someone who's very controlling, overbearing, um, manipulative, and not hiding it, not subtly, very mood, crazy mood swings. It can be sickly. If you're a mother out there and you have Saturn on the ascendant, you can be born of a rough birth, like a, like maybe had to have a C-section or something like that, or have a child that was like had to be a C-section or some, something was rough about the birth because Saturn can do these things. Saturn is always trying to delay, so trying to delay that baby being born, things like this. Um, um, like I said, there can be... Long, there could be psychological issues with an individual if it's on the ascendant, and there could there could be physical ailments as well. Um, but you really want to see where Chiron is with this, especially if Chiron is touching that in any way, then you're almost certainly going to have sickness and maladies in your life. Um, or you're going to be someone that's going to be very, well, have had it, overcame it, and then teaches others how to how to over, uh, overcome it themselves because you know and gain status out of it because that's what Saturn is. Now, this is an individual that can gain great status, right? 
but it's going to be an individual that has to overcome a lot to do it. But they're going to be the kind of people that can. They can work very, very hard. If Capricorn is there, you're unlikely to get your status until later in, later in life. But if you do get the status early, be careful later in life of like scandal. Of like maybe you didn't achieve it in the way you should have. Maybe you cut some corners. Saturn doesn't necessarily represent great wealth here. But because he can represent great status, that's going to come along with it naturally. Okay? It's not something specifically for money here, but if it's on the ascendant, it's well dignified, and it's touch like well, unless it's, I mean, and somehow aspecting the second house in a good way, in good signs, then, and it can because if Saturn was on your ascendant, it can it can try in the second house, um, then, depending on twelfth or first house, but it still can, um, you could you could be very wealthy, and it's through your your status and your. Um, your hard hard work specifically could you just assume as someone that's going to have to work hard it may not it may you may not go about it in the most honest way because you're going to you're going to gain that status no matter what like at least that's the goal but hard work is going to have to be a part of it even if you cut some corners here and there you're still going to have to work hard there's no doubt about it but most likely your status will not come to later in age and it can it can also represents someone that lives a very long time. If Saturn is on the ascendant, you may have a long, long life because Saturn can represent that. But he can also represent sickness. So you could have sickness and still live a long time, like an ailment that you can't heal, but you have to live with it for a very long time. It can be like that as well. Um, this is a person that's probably not going to show a lot of emotion, depending on the sign that it's in, right? If it's in fire signs or in air signs, they're probably going to be more animated. Um, Aquarius, maybe not so much, but... Um, most likely they're going to be very serious. If it's an Aquarius, they're going to seem kind of odd. They're going to be kind of a... My cat's meowing. They're going to seem kind of odd. Like, because um, Aquarians kind of think out of the box and they're already attached, detached from emotions. So if Saturn's there on the Ascendant in Aquarius, they're really going to be attached from emotions and they're really... It's almost going to seem like they're pretending to have human emotions. <laughs> um, but they're not going to be someone that shows a lot of emotions. They're going to be very serious. And again, this will depend on what other planets it's aspecting. If it's in like Gemini, this is Gemini's. If you have a Gemini ascendant, you're always going to be in communication. You're always going to be social. So this can this can be a very manipulative individual. If you have a Saturn on your ascendant and it's in Gemini, it's going to be someone that uses their their speech and communication to manipulate others. Um, and it's going to be probably pretty obvious. Um, and mood swings can be a big thing with this. If you have Saturn there, if Saturn is not touching the ascendant, it's just in the first house, like I said has no aspects, a lot of this won't play a big role. Um, they could be someone that's very introverted as well. If you're in a sign like Pisces or Cancer um, and it's on your ascendant, or even Scorpio it can be, specifically the water signs. Um, you could have someone that's an introvert, absolutely introverted. It can be tough to balance um, emotion with a planet, with Saturn on your ascendant in an emotional planet like that. It can, mood swings can be can be extreme in those situations, especially with cancer, if it's in cancer. Um, but the thing is here is, like I said before, you don't want to, it's, it's about the masks, right? It's your physical appearance too. This could be someone that's, like I said, it's very, if, if, if Saturn is, is on your ascendant and it is affecting the way you look, um, dark hair, dark eyes, very good looking, like if it's if it's ascendant Capricorn with Saturn on it, this is going to be a very good looking individual, and they're generally going to have darker features. They're going to look like this, like like a, they should. <laughs> if it's a male, it's going to be look like somebody that's like a CEO of a company kind of person. Female, it's still going to be a very beautiful individual, but it's generally you're going to see darker features, but very attractive because Capricorn is a very attractive sign, um, and Saturn will amplify that. So if Saturn if Saturn is on the ascendant, and it's in a sign that is considered a beautiful sign, like Sagittarius, Libra, even Gemini. It's going to be a very good-looking individual, and it will accentuate that. But Saturn will also cause issues around that, or can, specifically with your persona. Because the first house is the persona. You may crystallize with that mask, and you make how you look your identity instead of um, understanding that it is a mask and, and having a relationship with who you really are or at least trying to have a relationship with who you really are because you don't want to crystallize anything too much because then something happens. Let's say you crystallize with that too much, you repress too much, and then something happens like it scars your face 
or something like that. Your whole world will be shattered. It will be devastating because you've clinged to this mask and it has become who you are. And when that breaks, boom, it shatters and everything. You're talking about psychological issues from the unconscious that would just be so difficult to deal with because you have placed all of your identity into this mask. And it's just a mask. You have to see it as a mask. And Saturn will make that very difficult in the first house. However it manifests in whatever sign and with whatever aspects on it, the, the key here is to understand the aspect of the fact that we do wear masks. And we do hide things when we present a specific image. Like if we're trying to court someone, like we see someone we're attracted with, we're laughing at stuff that isn't even funny. That is a mask, right? You're hiding what you really think and you're trying to put forth this admiration that you have for that individual so that maybe they'll like you better. But if you're not aware that it is a mask that you put on at that time and that there is something that you're repressing, it becomes dangerous because it gets repressed into the unconscious and therefore isn't felt or integrated and therefore will manifest in random ways. Anyway, the key here is to understand that we do wear masks and you want to keep it fluid and moving. Saturn here can represent delays and you may, the focus for prestige and the focus for reputation here is going to be very important. Even if it's not touching the ascendant and it just has aspects on it in the first house and it does have power, reputation is going to be important for you. Hard work is going to be important for you. And if you can, and you should be built for it. Because Saturn is going to call it, make you work hard. It's going to also make it feel like that it's taking forever, that it's not working out, and there's going to be a lot of conflict there. But if you learn the lessons and you grow, and you can wear your masks loosely and, and acknowledge them so that they, so they can be integrated or just pull them out when you need them, that kind of thing, and but are aware of what they are, once you hit generally past your first Saturn cycle, ages 27 to 31, if you learned your lessons well, once you get after that time, probably mid to late 30s, you'll start to really gain your prestige and your role in life because Saturn generally will delay things if he is on your ascendant. So you're looking after 35 for things to really take hold of your life, maybe even 40. But if you, if you gain everything very quickly with Saturn on the, on the ascendant or in the first house and he's got energy there, you gain everything very quickly, you need to watch that first Saturn cycle. That can be very dangerous. Lots of famous people tend to die between 27 and 31 and you had the curse of the age 27 but it's really the first Saturn cycle they gained a lot very quickly without learning the lessons right there was probably some corners cut though we don't know necessarily the other facts of all of it and something wasn't learned and Saturn was like bye <laughs> and that's just how it goes sometimes um, and then and then I've been trying to study charts of individuals that died really early like that and I'm seeing a correlation between the the eighth house which is the house of death and Pluto and Chiron but I'll get into that maybe in another video or I'm in a live stream. I'll, I'll explain that. But anyway, that's all I have. Um, please consider liking, subscribing, and commenting. If you want more videos like this, you want more good information, I need to get this channel moving and monetized to give me a real reason to pour into it. You don't have to if you don't want to. I'm just grateful that you're here. Please check out some of my other astrology videos and even my tarot videos. I'd be very grateful. Thank you and bye-bye.